get in focus. I, uh, nice. I take a quick look at Ironheart 12, and then I go into Comics Gate bitchiness with EVS, Nasser, Cecil, Donald DeLay, Edwin Boyette, and a few others. So skip ahead. I'll put the timestamp below. Click the links to send me art or to support the channel. And I want to thank the people who have supported the channel with art and financially. It, uh, I, I got to admit, when I saw that people have, um, <laughs> have done that, I was, uh, I was a little choked up. I was a little emotional. I was surprised. Anyway, how to write a black character. As a trans lesbian woman of color myself, I am obviously eminently qualified to lecture you cis devils, and Marvel should hire me immediately. I promise that I will show up in a lipstick and a dress looking just as sexy as a six foot one, 300 pound person can look in lipstick and a dress. That wouldn't be terrifying. <laughs> yes, yes it would. People would probably reach for their pepper spray. First of all, first of all, you need sex appeal. Boobies. Boobies have to at least be a C cup. But she's a kid. Well, that is your first mistake. Kids are annoying. Kids are very, very dumb. Nobody wants to read about a snot-nosed, know-it-all brat talking to you, Nasser. Make Riri at least the age of consent where the comic is sold. Unless it's in the Middle East, because then she'd be around six. And those people who, shall I say, find kids attractive are degenerates. Sorry, Muhammad. Maybe I should skip that joke. I don't want to be Charlie hebdo I'll just edit that out and out in uh, post-production, but you know, of course, there is no post-production because this is a cell phone and a Kindle, propped up on a pair of socks. When you look at the cover of Ironheart, you see four breastless ladies who look pissed off. Most people are not even going to pick this up, and that's why it sells 10,000 issues. Four angry lesbians on the cover, and it's not selling well. Well, who didn't see that coming? Let me tell you about black people. <laughs> Assume that they are the same as Eurasians, that they want to look at beautiful people doing cool stuff, not breastless lesbians who are mad at their dads. In fact, stop thinking that this comic is going to be written for a particular audience. Focus on classic storytelling. Idealize characters who are aspirational and inspirational. Perfect bodies, opened and friendly faces. Reading this cover tells me this comic isn't for most people, but it's not even for most black people. It's for like 10,000 college lesbians who want a virtue signal that they are woke and have no taste in art. Or maybe Ironheart is sold to libraries? I don't know. Even if this was free, almost any other comic is a better use of your time. I would say a bunch of woke moms are buying this for their kids, but woke women are usually childish weirdos who are cat moms. I can imagine the look of confusion when the kid picks up this book, the what the heck moment when they realize that the cover is an accurate representation of the interior. When I was a kid, I read everything that passed my way, even books that were way over my head. I took a shot at them, but Ironheart 12 would confuse me. Why is everyone so cranky looking? Another thing. This is not worth $4. It's not even worth $1.50, but at least $1.50 is a more realistic number. But even lowering the price won't work. You have to also start by changing the cover. You need beautiful people, if, if not smiling, at least not looking pissed off. Also, where's the diversity? Where are the men and the people of the light? You have four mixed-race Africans, all exactly the same bodies, all A or B cup, the uh, classical approved body types that won't offend anyone. Ain't nobody got time for that. Sex sells. Black chicks, like all chicks everywhere, like to look beautiful. With covers like this, you're trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. The only market for this is black girls from maybe 6 to 10? I think even like a 12 year old is what, 8th grade before they go into high school? Even an 8th grader is going to look at this and not really, just going to kind of pick it up, say these people look stupid and put it down again. That is a tiny audience. That's why you're only shipping 10,000 or so by issue 12. I can only find the issue 10 was shipping 10,000. So by issue 12, it's probably 10,000 just exactly. How many are you actually selling? Who knows? I know their counter-argument is, Oh no, this comic is for boys also. Well, that's where you're wrong, kiddo. 
Let me ask the creators this. Why would a 10-year-old black girl buy this? Why would a, a any male of any age buy this? They wouldn't. They aren't. Comics is a business. You need to sell this to people. Why is this a foreign concept to these people? People complain about outrage YouTube channels, but it turns out that clicks is what people enjoy. I mean, that kind of outrage marketing that gets clicks, people really, really get off on those kind of, you know, like, what are those blood, blood campaigns, blood sports on, on the internet? Um, you think EVS does what he does? I mean, why do you think he does what he does? You think he is actually worked up about Star Wars? You think he cares about Star Wars this often? Of course not. He is an outrage YouTuber now. He's got to keep the ball rolling. He stream snipes Miller and Tenaple uh, and Edwin Boyette's channels just to keep the drama going. His argument with the Christian comic gators would have ended a long time ago, but it is literally making him hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in YouTube donations. Yes, those super chats really add up. Hey, I don't blame him. I admire his hustle. I assume he is spending the money on cocaine and whores. I mean, I would. The only difference is that my whores probably wouldn't be trannies. My only real criticism is that he does this chicken shit form of defamation where he talks about his old friends and he says things like, people call them ists and phobes. I don't, but you know, people do. This is cowardly. If you're going to accuse your old friends, have the balls to accuse them yourself to their face, i.e. on a live stream. And before you accuse me of not doing the same, I think they need a thousand subs before I'm allowed to live stream from a cell phone. Um, I could do it from a laptop, but I'd rather just buy a laptop for YouTube so you know I don't dox myself or whatever the hell I'm working on, you know, other people's uh, information on the laptop. And I don't know if they're going to kick me off YouTube in a few weeks or what. So I'm holding off on spending money on YouTube. Actually, if they kick off all the small guys, that would be a good thing because BitChute would blow up. So would DLive. It would be a viable platform then. My growth on BitChute is very close to my YouTube growth, so you know there's some shenanigans going on with YouTube. This is my alt account, but on my main account, for some reason, Nasser blocked me on YouTube and Twitter. He's the only guy that I block back. I can't figure out why he blocked me. Did I make some jokes about Nasser? Yes. But I make fun of everything and everybody. Nobody has blocked me before. It's kind of a weird feeling. How is he any different from an SJW? I've joked around with him, but I always complimented him and his work. I said he's got balls for standing up to the SJWs and the mainstream comics. It's sad to see him turn into such a skirt, but I'll still support him and his comics. I'm all about supporting indie comics. We don't all have to agree on every issue. If Nasser wants to be soy, but can still make good books, I will give him a fair review. I will say that he is making a mistake a lot of young people are making. He's making tweets and videos where he is overestimating how interesting he is. He's a very young man with a unibrow who is offering writing advice. That's something he should be doing in 20 years. After years of success, he has been very successful in a short time in Comicsgate, but let's be honest, if it wasn't for Comicsgate and EVS, nobody would have ever heard of him. Comicsgate gave him a great start. We offered him a platform to shine, and he came in and starting, uh, started insulting a beloved member of Comicsgate, Cecil, who was love. Then he came around to liking Cecil, but then NASA started fighting with Donald DeLay, Ben Henderson, and John Malin, and he was relief releasing private DMs, which is a dumb, dumb thing to do. I suspect that Nasser is on the spectrum. He doesn't seem to realize how weird he is or how he appears to people. Remember how he used to sit in his car and eat while making videos? <laughs> All you could see was his unibrow just loudly eating with an open mouth. Actually, he looks a lot like a less attractive version of my uncle's. I mean, really, how hard is it to shave your unibrow? I have to admit that it's something I also have to do, unfortunately. I am from a group of hairy brown people, so unibrows and waxing is well known among my people. Oh, oh, what's this? A plug for a beautiful t-shirt at my Teespring store? Look at this shirt that somebody made for me. Isn't this, this kick-ass? It's $12. Um, I don't care if I'm the only pe person who buys these shirts. I think they are fantastic. Anyway, you can click the links in the description to go check out some of these shirts.
this is um, for a little explanation for out, out why people have to outrage market. I, I'm not sure why if it's, it's coming in clear. This is um, EVS's channel. Let's scroll down to the. And yes, before you say anything, if you click on mine, um, it's not. I mean, obviously, it's a tiny channel. He's, he's doing. He's very, very successful. But Comicsgate in general is very, very flat, as you can see. Oh, back to Nasser. You know why nobody eats on a live stream? It's because it's disgusting. Maybe if you're a smoking hot blonde chick doing a food review, but you can't be ugly, hairy, and eating loudly with your mouth open. I mean, you've got to pick your battles, or at least show a little cleavage or thighs. But that would probably be hairy also. He probably looks like a Wookiee down there. One of the best shows was when Cecil gave Nasser the Voight Kampf test from Blade Runner that proved that Nasser was probably human, but definitely going to remain a serial masturbator for the next 30 years. Maybe he'll work his way up from waifu pillow to Southeast Asian transsexual prostitute. I'm just kidding. Eventually he will get a girlfriend who will enjoy his company, but who he will continue to disappoint sexually for the rest of their lives together. At least she'll have a unibrow. Their kids will probably look like Ewoks, but I'm sure that Nasser doesn't know what those are. He's of the generation that had Disney Star Wars, which might explain a lot. Anyway, he had a great opportunity with Comicsgate, but he threw it away. To be fair, Comicsgate imploded mostly due to EVS and War Campaign. I don't even know if I should even go into that issue. Every time I mention War Campaign, I lose subs, but losing subs keeps me humble. On average, I think I get a sub every other day or every few days or something, so I'm a very humble little channel. <laughs> But most Comic Gate channels are flat in terms of growth. Even Ethan's channel is dead. John Delarose and Nerdette's newsstand are growing for some reason. Well, at least Nerdette is sexy. I wouldn't exactly say JDA is sexy, but he has been pretty funny lately. JDA and John Malin are two guys who I suspect will do very well on YouTube. They both started off very rough and uncomfortable on camera, but they've both improved so much. John has a huge network... Um, led by EVS to help him grow his channel, while well, JD only has himself to thank, but they're both doing well. It's too bad the EVS had to screw things up so badly. Maybe every Sunday I'll do an EVS-centered video where I point out how badly he screwed up Comicsgate. Anyway, Ironheart. Oh, Ironheart. Okay, this is the monthly gain subs and views and that kind of stuff. And um, he's, I mean, there's a lot of Comicsgate that are basically doing this. You can see this line at the bottom here is the zero line, so it means it's very, very flat. Um, and it doesn't have to be. The guy is a tremendous talent, and he could turn he could turn his channel around. He could turn Comics Gate around. He's like, dude, he made a million dollars last year. Yeah, you know, next year he could be he could be doing two million dollars. He has every there's every possibility that he could be doing two million dollars a year uh, next year, and then the year after that, a few years after that, three million dollars. Comics Gate could continue to grow phenomenally. If everyone involved, EVS, uh, Mike Miller, a bunch of the other guys sat down privately, pulled their heads out of their asses, you might need some lube for that, and said, guys, guys, do we want to, do we want to turn this thing around? Do we want to be wildly, wildly successful financially? Because we can do it. It doesn't have to be zero growth like this. It can be more like this. It's completely possible. As much as I rip on EVS, and I love ripping on him, he's a fun guy to rip on, he is absolutely able to turn this around. And most of it rests on his shoulder. If he if he pulls his head out of his ass and just uh, stops... Uh, well, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that for now. Every time I say things about him, I just kind of get a little fired up. So I'll, I'll, um, I'll save it. I'll save it. I'll... Okay, is this his cover of Iron Heart? Does this appeal to anyone? Um, a B cup, A cup, A cup, and Snake Eyes is probably a dude. Except your waist is a little too skinny, so I guess it's an A cup chick. Um, who does this appeal to? Uh, okay, this is the the writer. I don't know who she is. Eve Ewing. <laughs> Please, dear God, get me through this. Dearest readers, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for picking up this title every month, all 10,000 of you. For your letters, for your tweets, your cosplay, your fan art, for everything. Whether you're a lifelong Marvel reader or this was your first foray into the world of comics, 
Please know that our entire creative team is so deeply grateful for the love and support. You've, you've 10,000 people have supported you. It's $40,000 a month coming into a major, major name for Marvel. That's not a whole heck of a lot of support. Writing Ironheart has been one of the most incredible experiences of my life. You should really get out more. I'm proud of us, and I'm proud of her. Our girl, Riri, really grew up this year, didn't she? She didn't grow out. Trade in that training bra. I feel like she earned her title as the iconic Ironheart. Chicago's greatest... Chicago's a shithole. Greatest superhero, and I dare you to say otherwise. I'll be seeing you at Astra per Aspera? Eve? What does that mean? For the stars? For the stars? To the stars? To aspire? I, I don't know. Latin Latin was um, 20 years ago, so I don't know. I don't know a whole lot of Latin anymore. Um, Merci, Porto, and live Ironheart. Thank you for Iron... Thank you and long life for Ironheart. Um, yeah, okay, so where's the photographs of the cosplay? Hey, look, next month's Ironheart. Um... Let's see three black folk uh some korean dude some i don't know whatever the hell this ch chick is in the foreground and some character with white skin so it means he's going to be a complete and total asshole oh and look at what they're looking at on screen a uh, blonde a blonde guy a bunch of black folk are looking at a blonde guy what does that mean blonde guy with a red tie that means right wing republican drum am i right Guys, uh, I'll tell everyone who's writing this kind of horseshit, your audience is not retarded. We see the the antagonist in every single issue is a blonde, white-skinned Western European who's probably German. Am I right? Those goddamn Germans! It's just... It's it's stupid. It's it's dumb. It's something that children would do before you'd you'd point out to the child who's writing the comic book. Hey, listen, you can't make the bad guys blonde every every once in a while because you're gonna have to make the blonde guy, the bad guys um, African American or Koreans or whatever Southeast Asian or Pakistanis. Guess who? Um, I won't say it. I won't say it. I won't say it. I won't say it. I won't. I won't. I just won't say it. But it's killing me not to say it. It's literally hurting me not to say it. But I won't say it. I won't say it. I'll save it for I'll save it for bitch you. All right, guys. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna have to end this here, or else I'm gonna say something dumb. All right, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Send me your art at Bianca Zombie Six Two. <laughs> I gotta I gotta just stop this.